you think that will be the art of the successful people building AI startups is how good they are at doing stuff like that, vectorizing data, putting it together, tweaking the model? Do you think that will be where the real competition between you know AI startup to AR startup will be in how you work with a model like that? Yes, yes, because the within a small uh, number of tokens, like any public model works really well, but yeah, the, uh, and anybody can do it. Yeah, basically. but the technology for like vector embedding, like when the scale, the sheer scale of data increase, like by by the multiples of the hundreds or thousands, that's yeah. when things start getting tricky. And uh, public models out there they're like they still need a lot more work they're still quite a way from actually being something that's uh, usable in kind of general for general public and for end, end users we're going into the part of the ai understanding where I, I start to get limited when you say public models is there a chance that you could take like some open source code about a public model and you can create kind of your own model? Is that how it works? I'm asking because mm. I don't know. Yeah, or, yeah. Or so, yeah. So, um, yeah, open source, like for example, language mod, large language models, there are open source yeah. ones from, yeah, like for example, like Facebook have open source, um, different open source models out there that you can kind of use. Um, and generally, the quality, of course, is not as good as the ones that you have to pay for. But, uh, yeah. Is that something you consider, like doing your own LLM, like taking some open source code and then like setting up your completely own version? It yeah, sounds yeah. like that's not what you're doing. Oh, no. Yeah, definitely. Um, like, of course, we want to improve um, you know, do we have our own kind of use cases where we want to like make, we want to tailor the language model so that it serves our users the best. So that's kind yeah. of like something that we do have in the roadmap as well. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, complex stuff. So we <laughs> don't need to- Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that, that's why I love having these conversations because I don't know. And I think very few people actually when you get into the weed of things where it starts becoming more uh, not confusing for me is like what is the difference between it seems to me like many startups out there right now is getting data sources from companies and then basically uh, adding it into chat gbt taking an output from chat gbt and then using that and then using that to enrich the conversations but that the the base model is like working on on GPT, right? And I'm a little bit, I'm not quite, uh, I don't quite understand how you would take, you know, the open source code of the la language model behind GPT and then uh, pull it into a different environment and then train your own type of language model. But in my head, it's like, if you're able to do that and you either enriching it with different data sources and then if you can also add in, you know, what you said before, better vectorization and tweaking and you could end up with like a completely unique I assume language model that Woodpecker is the only one that that uses, right? And then that would be, I assume, a pretty crazy competitive advantage, but would probably also be very, very difficult compared mm -hmm. to what you have now, right? So I think I just think that balance is interesting. Like, how would you how would you go yeah. about it, and, and what do you guys think about it? Right? It's um, and this is a really interesting topic in a way. Like, okay, do you use what's already out there, or do you try yes. to like build your own? And I think more and more, looking at the speed of uh, looking at the speed of development that L OpenAI yeah. does, you know, because their sole focus is to improve what's already the best. Like they released the best thing, and now they're improving the best thing. So, yeah. in what world does anyone who's outside of OpenAI think that they can compete with that? So, is it a losing battle? almost that you're kind of trying to build your own model from yes. the open source ones uh, versus actually just using what's the best out there. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I don't have like the perfect answer. It's, it's interesting, right? It's, it's because it's super high stakes because it's, yeah. 
I get that because I, you know, OpenAI is just vacuuming data up, right? That, that you can see that's what they're trying to do is like, now we understand pictures, now we understand this, you know, they, w they just want to make it as easy as possible for everyone to just load up data into mm -hmm. the model because I think what they're seeing is it's a race, right? So if, if they manage to vacuum up twice the amount of data than any other model have to learn from, their probability of being able to create better answers would be higher and they would win and get more data and then you have this network effect, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a really good point that you have that when they're doing all of this work in getting more knowledge into the model, how would you ever be able to create something on your own that could yeah. compete with that? I don't know. I haven't thought about it.